There are no towns in Antarctica, no suburbs, no neighborhoods, no addresses. Only coordinates, wind and white. It's the one continent where no one is born, and no one dies by ordinary means. People arrive, they endure, and then they leave, as if even time itself refuses to settle here. At the edges of the world, where every direction feels like north, humanity's presence is a thin layer of persistence stretched over an ancient silence. The first explorers who set foot here wrote about it like a dream, a place of blinding purity that made them feel both infinite and small. Today, the aircraft still come and go, bringing supplies, food, and a handful of souls willing to live months without sunrise. They call it the ice. Never home. Life here doesn't unfold, it pauses. Even the machines sound tentative, their engines muffled by snow. The sky feels closer, swollen, slow-moving, heavy with light that never seems to end. And below it all lies a continent larger than Europe, untouched by cities or flags. The ice sheet is older than our species. Beneath it are mountains taller than the Alps, valleys deeper than the Grand Canyon, and rivers that have never met the air. And yet, we do come. Every year, hundreds of scientists, technicians, pilots, cooks, mechanics, the invisible crew of a world that shouldn't be livable. They work in stations that cling to the ice like fragile shelters from another planet. They gather data about the ozone, the stars, the microbes that might outlast us all. They live at the edge of what's bearable, so the rest of us can know what lies beyond. In the quiet of the Antarctic night, when the sun has vanished for months, the stillness is absolute. Radios hum, ice groans, and somewhere out there, under a sky cold enough to freeze breath midair, a lone researcher steps outside the dome to look up. What he sees isn't just the aurora. It's the last wilderness that never asked to be found. For all our progress, all our expansion, there remains one continent humanity visits, but never claims. Antarctica, the edge of the map, the pause in our story, the last place left to simply be. Those who live on Antarctica never truly arrive there. They pass through layers of preparation, permission, and isolation until finally they're dropped into a landscape that looks like nowhere else on Earth. When the plane departs, taking its sound with it, they realize something quietly unnerving. There are no trees, no birds, no cities to orient the mind, just horizon and wind. The people of the ice form a small, drifting population, a few thousand in summer, a few hundred in the long, dark winter. They are scientists, yes, but also electricians, plumbers, cooks, mechanics, pilots, carpenters, medics, and radio operators. The ones who keep the heat running, the lights on, the oxygen flowing. Each base is its own fragile ecosystem of human necessity, suspended over frozen time. Inside a research station, days become indistinguishable. Clocks mean little when the sun circles the sky endlessly or disappears for months. Meals mark the rhythm of survival. People gather for breakfast even when their bodies don't know what time it is. Some watch old movies together. Others write in journals. Conversations loop about weather, home, the things they miss. Loneliness becomes routine, but so does laughter. At McMurdo, the largest outpost, a sense of surreal normalcy exists. There's a post office, a small chapel, even a bar. A bulletin board filled with paper notes that flutter when the door opens. But step outside, and it feels like stepping onto another planet. The sound drops away, and the sky becomes an ocean of light. It's easy to forget that every food item... Every bolt, every drop of fuel was flown or shipped from thousands of kilometers away. Further inland, places like Concordia Station live in even greater isolation. The crew spends months with no daylight, temperatures near minus 80 degrees Celsius, and no chance of rescue if something goes wrong. They study the atmosphere, the ice cores, and the resilience of the human mind. 
Psychologists use their data to understand what long-term space travel might feel like. Antarctica, as Earth's rehearsal for the stars. Some stay for a season. A few return, year after year, drawn back by something they can't quite name. They talk about the silence, the simplicity, the feeling of standing in a place that doesn't belong to anyone. For a brief time, they form the closest thing Antarctica has to residents, the temporary citizens of the world's last unclaimed land. And then, one day, the plane returns. They pack their few belongings, tape up the crates, and step aboard. As the engines roar and the white fades beneath them, a strange melancholy sets in, because though they never called it home, leaving the ice always feels like leaving part of themselves behind. The quiet part that learned to live with nothing but sky and snow. Humanity has built cities in deserts, floated colonies on the sea, and carved homes into mountain cliffs. Yet on the coldest, driest, emptiest continent of all, we have never built a town. Not one permanent settlement. No real citizens. Only temporary guests of the ice. The reasons are both practical and philosophical. Antarctica rejects permanence. It isn't just cold. It's hostile to continuity. The air is so dry that metal cracks like old wood. The cold seeps through every layer of insulation. Engines refuse to start. Plastics shatter and electronics fail. Nothing planted grows. Every building must be anchored deep into permafrost that still shifts and groans. Even the most advanced shelters must be constantly repaired, fed by endless shipments of fuel, food, and hope. Logistically, it's impossible to sustain ordinary life here. Every supply must come from far across the Southern Ocean, often through storms and shifting ice. A gallon of fuel costs more than a luxury meal by the time it reaches the pole. And if you forget something, a tool, a medicine, a spare part, you wait months for the next plane. But the truth goes deeper. We have chosen, perhaps wisely, not to colonize this place. In 1959, the Antarctic Treaty declared the continent a sanctuary, devoted to science, peace, and the preservation of its fragile ecosystem. No military bases, no mining, no nuclear testing, no ownership. A shared decision that, for once, humanity made, not for conquest, but for restraint. This is what makes Antarctica different from every other frontier we've reached. It remains the only continent not parceled into property lines, not rewritten by governments or corporations. For once, the Earth has a space where the world agreed not to build an empire. A collective silence at the bottom of the planet. Yet, that silence is being tested. Climate change, resource scarcity, and technology are tempting new ambitions. Beneath the ice lie vast reserves of coal, oil, and minerals. Some nations watch quietly, waiting for treaties to expire or weaken. But those who have lived on the ice understand something deeper. To settle here would mean to destroy the very condition that makes it sacred. It's solitude. To live permanently on Antarctica would mean turning it into everywhere else. Power grids, roads, pollution, noise. The ice would shrink, the wildlife retreat, and another piece of mystery would vanish. Humanity, for all its progress, has rarely resisted expansion. Yet here, at the end of the earth, we still draw a line and say, not yet. Maybe that's what makes Antarctica so haunting. It's not that no one can live there. It's that we shouldn't. It stands as a reminder that not every place must be conquered, not every silence filled, not every horizon crossed. For now, at least, the white continent remains a pause in the story, a place beyond ambition, where the human urge to inhabit gives way to the quiet decision to leave something untouched. For all we think we know about Earth, Antarctica remains the most mysterious continent. A place where even the map feels incomplete. Beneath its kilometers of ice lies an unseen world, older than our history, locked away from sunlight for millions of years. It's as if the planet itself hid something here, and forgot where it put it. 
Deep below the surface, satellites have revealed mountain ranges as large as the Alps, the Gumbertsef Mountains, entirely buried beneath the ice. No human eyes have ever seen them. Between these frozen peaks lie ancient valleys and lakes, sealed off since before the dawn of humanity. Lake Vostok, the largest of them, lies under nearly four kilometers of ice, liquid, pressurized, and isolated from the atmosphere for perhaps 20 million years. Scientists have drilled into it carefully, fearful of contamination, curious about what forms of life might have survived in complete darkness and freezing pressure. The microbes found in these extreme environments are not quite like any others on Earth. They breathe minerals, metabolize slowly, and live in temperatures where life shouldn't be possible. They are time travelers carrying genetic echoes from an older version of our planet. In their resilience, we glimpse what life might look like elsewhere, on Europa, Enceladus, or beneath the ice of Mars. Antarctica in that way is both alien and familiar, a frozen rehearsal for exploration beyond Earth. But it's not just science that haunts this place. The absence of knowledge invites imagination. Myths have grown around the blank spaces on the map. Stories of hidden bases, ancient civilizations, alien relics buried in the ice. People whisper about lost technology or secret tunnels leading to a hollow world. These stories endure not because they're true, but because Antarctica feels like the kind of place where truth could easily hide. And perhaps there are truths we've yet to see. Geological, biological, philosophical. Beneath the ice may lie the oldest record of Earth's climate, preserved in frozen layers like pages of a book. By studying them, we learn not just about Antarctica, but about ourselves. How thin the balance of our world truly is, how easily it can tip. To walk across that white silence is to feel the weight of everything buried beneath it. Millions of years of memory, perfectly preserved. Antarctica is a paradox. A place where nothing seems alive, yet everything speaks of life's persistence. A continent that guards the planet's deepest secrets while pretending to be empty. We call it the hidden frontier, but maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's the mirror beneath our feet, reflecting the parts of human nature that still long for mystery, restraint, and wonder. Antarctica is not just a continent, it's an idea. A quiet monument to the limits of human reach. While every other corner of Earth has been shaped, mined, mapped, or claimed, the White Continent remains almost completely uninhabited, resisting our instinct to turn every wilderness into a neighborhood. But change is approaching, even here. The world is warming, and the ice is shifting. The edges of the continent, once unreachable, now draw tourists, filmmakers, and scientists in growing numbers. Cruise ships drift through melting icebergs. Temporary camps appear each summer, like flickers of civilization on a sleeping giant. For the first time in history, Antarctica is no longer purely isolated. It's accessible. Yet permanent settlement still feels impossible, even wrong. The body wasn't built for this kind of cold or this kind of silence. The mind, over time, begins to slip under the endless white. No trees to break the wind, no insects, no birdsong. People report strange dreams, long silences in conversation, and an awareness of time dissolving. The continent doesn't just isolate, it erases. It demands humility. Scientists speak of climate thresholds and ecological responsibility. Philosophers see Antarctica as a moral test, a place that measures our restraint more than our ambition. To live here permanently would be to declare the final victory of human dominance. To stay away is to admit that not everything must be conquered. Still, questions linger. As the planet warms, could Antarctica become livable? Would rising seas elsewhere push us south in desperation? Could future generations turn this forbidden wilderness into refuge? If that day ever comes, the first settlers will not be pioneers. They will be intruders, 
walking into a silence that was never theirs to break. For now it remains what it has always been, the Earth's quiet heart, beating beneath ice, a continent of absence where the human story pauses between ambition and awe. From space, it glows faintly blue, untouched and immense as if the planet itself is keeping one secret unspoiled. And maybe that's why it matters, because it reminds us that we are not everywhere yet, that there are still places so pure, so distant, that the only trace of humanity is the echo of our restraint. Antarctica stands as proof that sometimes the most powerful act of exploration is knowing when not to stay.